give my best to you I want to do what you ask me to I want to go What's up everybody, this is Ted Wynn and I'm hanging out with my girl Kelly Brew You stay tuned How you doing today? I'm well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, glad I'm not in the heat <laughs> no, <that's right. laughs> So we're going to talk about your music and stuff okay. and other things you have coming up Sure so I hear that you're back from a four-year hiatus from yes. recording and stuff. Um, why the time off? Um, well, primarily it's because I was um, I started a publishing ad man company. Mm -hmm. So I represent about thirty songwriters and I manage three producers. Oh wow! Yeah, wow, well, I was right. It takes a <laughs> lot of time and, and resources. So I really was dedicating myself to that because the company was going through going through a growth spurt. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of focused on that at that particular time. And I also feel like once you write songs for a project, I think you need to give yourself some time to kind of live life so you have something else to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> Tell your own story. Yeah. So right now you have a new single yes. called More, yes. which I absolutely love. Thank I you. love the <laughs> message in that. Um, what was your inspiration behind it? Um, I, I didn't write More. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, wrote, I heard the song about three years ago and it really moved me, uh, in addition to being a great lyric and a great melody, I felt like the message was something a little bit different than what we're accustomed to hearing. Because most things that we hear uh, in an American context are about getting, mm -hmm. right? What I can get, I get a, you know, God's gonna give me a big house, a big car, make me a millionaire, like, mm -hmm. that's all fine. But <laughs> I think a, a, an important Christian principle is how, that we become givers. And so this song is, talking about giving God more, mm -hmm. which I think can be mirrored in a lot of ways, not just through prayer, praise, worship, but how we treat each other, how we deal with each other, how we are responsible as human beings to each other. And so I felt like it was an important message and one that needed to be said. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I totally agree. I was like, when I heard it, I was like, wow, this is right on time yeah. <laughs> because that's how I feel as well. Yeah. So um, this song is going to be on your new album, yes. Perspective, that's yes. coming out. When will it be released? The album is supposed to be out late 2015. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that goes, but we're we're. I'm very excited about the single. It was um, 26 on Billboard Radio chart um, last week, and, okay. and it looks like we're moving up this week. So I'm very excited. About okay. That. So what can we expect differently from you as a solo artist now? Um, the music, the Ted and Sherry music, it just sonically is very different. That music really focused more on what she and I brought to the table as singers and how we mesh together as a duet. Mm -hmm. um, the sound on this project is really more about the writing, background vocals. It's more of who I am as a, as a, as a, as a singer, as an artist, and as a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And this pulls me more into the producer elements of myself too, because I didn't really produce a lot, or actually at all, on the Ted and Cherry record, but this, mm -hmm. this record I'm producing myself. Okay, okay. So, um, what? Will there be like any official videos coming soon for? Because I saw the the lyrical video. Is okay. there any <laughs> yes. any official videos coming? Yeah, soon? we want to do a video for more um, a concept video, and um, I still haven't written the title cut yet, which is entitled Perspective. So I would maybe do a video for that one as well. But I definitely want to do um, a visual for more. I'm, I'm very excited about that song. Okay, so you mentioned producing and songwriting and stuff, and you're obviously the talent as well. Which do you find more excitement in? That's a hard question. <laughs> uh, I think I find more excitement probably in performing. Okay. Yeah, I think being on stage, I mean, it's a real close call uh -huh. between that and um, producing background vocals. Like, I have a couple of guys. Um, mm -hmm. Justin Gilbert and Anthony Parrish, who are co producing this record with me, they handle all the instrumentation and do an amazing job. But when it comes to the vocals, I'm so particular about how those things are to be. Mm -hmm. That's really where I kind of, you know, really get involved um, in the studio. But yeah, I, I think if I had to pick and choose, it would probably be performing. Okay. But, um, recently, uh one of your musical peers, Erica Campbell, <laughs> <laughs> has been kind of scrutinize if you will for lack of a better word for her new song I love I love God uh -huh. um it, how do you feel about that do you feel like it's appropriate <laughs> to kind of swag out gospel a little bit to reach the youth well I will say this let me get a, this disclaimer I should say this first Erica's mm -hmm. a very good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, I've known her for a very long time and I think that as an artist as artists we should have the ability to express how we choose to express mm -hmm. um, and I think that there is definitely 
based on the response, there's an element of people for whom that sound and that lyric work. Like, they it's, like it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. they, they respond to it, they gravitate to it. It's not my creative taste, it's not what I would do. Um, but I think people have to have the creative ability to be able to, to do that. Somewhere along the way, it got labeled as trap gospel. I don't think that came from her. That was a little bit of a rub for me mm -hmm. because living in Atlanta, I understand what trap music is. I know the real definition exactly. of trap music. Mm -hmm. I know what a trap house is. Mm -hmm. And I just think it becomes kind of contradiction in terms to say trap gospel. It, right. Know? And it's going to sound extreme, but I'm, I'm going to preface this by telling you viewers it's, what I'm about to say is going to sound extreme, but it's almost like gospel porn. Like, it's just two words you don't use. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, no, I totally it's agree. It's like oil and water. So, I think in order to have that expression, it's cool. Now, I will say this, which might give me a little trouble, but I do, for me, and, I, and, I, and this is, I think, I said that to say that everybody should have a creative liberty. I would fight for anybody's liberty to be able to express how they want to. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned as a creative, I don't want to do anything as a creative that I feel like perpetuates, um, a certain ideology or mindset around language. I'm an English major, so okay. so love God doesn't really work for me. <laughs> and I feel like in some ways it can perpetuate an improper way of speaking that mm -hmm. doesn't build us up as a people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like one of the one of my the scenarios I like to use is always Lauren Hill when she had a song and she sang the word reciprocity in her song. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of word, word that a lot of people may, may not have been familiar with. But I feel like in a way it was almost like a backhanded way to educate people and introduce a new word into their vocabulary because now if you're singing the song, mm -hmm. you're singing the word. Mm -hmm. And so I think that in every way, because it's my particular call, that I want to always educate people and do what I can to offer something that I feel like brings us up as a people. Wow, great response. <laughs> Um, okay, so well, what in what ways do you feel that your music reaches the youth? Um, I feel like it does because it's honest and it's transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I've I've had the ability to to be able to write things that speak to a cross generational sect of, of listeners. So when you talk about overcoming triumph and pain, and you know that's no that's not age specific. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not race specific. It's not gender specific. Everybody experiences pain and trauma in their lives. And so I want my music to be one that causes all people, if they listen to it and hear it, to be inspired to, to do something about where they are. To realize the power that you have in your own hands yes. to shape your own destiny, right? Yes, and yes. that God has given you the ability to speak words and to create the kind of change that you want to see in your life. So that's, a, that's my goal for my music. <laughs> okay, okay, I feel like I'm getting the words. Hey, yes, I'm inspired. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay, so um, well, do you watch like any of the preachers, reality shows, the LA, Detroit, this, that, or whatever? I have not seen any reality shows ever. How do you feel about them? Do you do you feel I mean, like any reality shows? Not oh, you don't watch reality TV I don't watch at all. Any reality TV. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So my friends well, have you... conversations about reality TV. I'm like, Who okay, well, you don't like? watch it, but you're aware. I'm aware. Sure. How do you feel about? the church mixing with reality TV? Um, you know, my honest opinion is this. I mean, we have, in, in my mind, you know, romanticized the idea of church in America for a lot of years. Church is a business, mm -hmm. you know. It's a 501c3, but it's a business. And I think that we live in America. America's a capitalist society. You infuse capitalism in theology, you get a whole bunch of stuff. You get the reason that I said we should put out songs like give more as opposed yes. to always what we get. Yes. Um, I, I personally think that, you know, if people feel like this is their way of um, exposing other people to God or to a better way of living from their perspective, I mean, do what you do. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't watch reality TV. Would you so. ever consider doing the reality show yourself? In, doing a reality in, show? In terms of... Like the preachers of LA? Yeah, like... Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my next question is, are you single? I am. Okay, okay, so. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, well, uh, what qualities do you look for, you know, when dating and stuff? Um, I think the most important quality in dating um, really is, is honesty. Um, mm -hmm. And I know people say that a lot of times, but I think that it has to be coupled with 
with trust. And so I think that each person has to bring those two things to the table. Because I think what, what people look for in relationships, um, ultimately, even if they're not conscious of it, is really a safe space. Mm -hmm. Some place I can go, someone to whom I can go and feel comfortable um, being exactly who I am without fear of reprisal or judgment or condemnation or any of those things. And I think that creates a healthy space to cultivate a relationship. Because I feel like in most instances, well in all instances, that relationship should look like the one we have with God. Yes. Right? Yes. And I feel like that's one where you're not judged and you feel safe to be who you are, whatever that means. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, I noticed you don't have your dreads anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what made you cut them? Well, short answer is my locks were an expression of a few things. One, my appreciation of the natural texture of my hair, the way that it grew. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I was working in corporate America when I started my locks, so it was also kind of defiance in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I can have my hair this way and still right. work a corporate job. Um, but I had them for 10 years, and 10 years is an era of time, like a decade is an era. Mm -hmm. So for me, that era of time was over. I feel like I had made my statement. Um, I was the first gospel artist to ever have on a national platform to ever have locks oh. before anybody else did. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't my intention to be like, let me be the first. <laughs> yeah. It just happened that it was. And so after me came Ty Trippett and Stephen Hurd and Dion Kipping and other guys who came after me who had locked after the fact. But I think that the, you know, people's palate had been changed a little bit and they were a little bit more open to it. I mean, and I, I felt the pushback for like the first year <laughs> from, from audiences. Okay, so... Um, what has been the highlight of your career thus far, and what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? Wow, highlight of my career thus far, um, that's an interesting question, <laughs> would probably be, um... I mean, because you won awards and like yeah. all kinds of things. I don't know if the awards, I don't know if that was the highlight. I think the highlight probably, it's not one thing, it probably is when I meet and get messages from people mm -hmm. who tell me how the music impacted them. That's the biggest thing, I think. What's the most like amazing story you've heard that you can uh, think of real quick? Like The most amazing story is, <laughs> I don't know, probably one, the, probably, I mean, it, it's, just, it's not the, it's the same story, but probably when people have experienced the death of uh, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, mm -hmm. and they've said like it was really rough for me, and your song, The Lifter, or whatever song it was, mm -hmm. helped me get through that moment. I've had people say they were you know, getting ready to drop out of college. Um, I've had people say they were suicidal. Um, you know, and that probably is the one that really moved me the most. I think, now that I'm thinking about it, I've got an in inbox from somebody who said they were really you know, in a really low place, and they heard this, this song, God Believes in You, the song I wrote my first solo record, and it really changed their their whole thing about it. Yeah, I mean, music is powerful, it you is know, powerful. it definitely is. It is powerful. So, um, but what I'm looking, for, I'm not looking forward to mm -hmm. my next record. <laughs> and what's your next record? I mean, my next album. Oh, okay. I'm looking, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm looking forward to that, but you know what, I'm also looking forward to um, honestly, expanding my brand. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to going to new places. I'm looking forward to doing some things outside of the country. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to doing some more intimate sets. I've never really done intimate sets before, so we're looking at doing some acoustic sets and just some different stuff because I really want to share this music with, with people. Okay, so yeah, that was going to kind of be like my next question. Like, did you have any other projects or ventures or things that you're working on that you want to? talk about? I, I have a venture, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I do have a venture that I'm working on because to this point, one of the things that I've never done is is television. So one of my aspirations is to do TV. Um, I have some show ideas in my head. Okay. Not a reality show. <laughs> but I have a very interesting show in my head that I've gotten um, some very positive feedback from, from some people who do TV. And um, this guy I met years ago who was a producer at BET, um, said he felt like I had something that would resonate on TV in terms of my persona. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, really? And then after, you know, talking to some other people and then doing a couple of things that were televised, I was able to watch back. Um, it, it, I don't know, it, it inspired me. And then I think with all of the things that were happening, have been happening in our country with, you know, the situations with Mike Brown and, yes. and, and uh, Freddie Gray and all those people, mm -hmm. it made me feel like I wasn't doing 
Mm -hmm. And so the main catalyst is I want to do something more that brings more conversation that hopefully brings about change in the country. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's definitely been an issue, you know, on the news like every other day. Yeah. It's it's something going on with the police and yep. black men and well um as a black man like what advice could you give to to our youth specifically you know black young black men or boys to you know help keep them you know strong and motivated through situations like this because it's very scary i have a teenage son myself and really? it's like you know i worry every yeah, time sure. he walks out the door sure it's it, frightening i mean in some ways it can be but i think the thing that we have to really you know, own is our own, what we, whatever it is that we can do as individuals. And so my advice to any young black male would be um, to educate yourself. You know, know the law, know what your rights are, totally. know what they are, but also make smart decisions. Because sometimes, you know, the side of the road or wherever you're encountering a police officer is not the place to hold court. It's just not, right? There is a place and time for that. And so sometimes we have to just acquiesce and, you know, come out alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, no, and I, I totally agree. get to the place agree. where you can, you can defend yourself in a proper form because at the end of the day, and this is kind of, and the, the, the kind of irony of it is that change doesn't usually happen until somebody dies, but we don't want it to be, you don't want to be the one who gets, who gets right, killed, you right. know? Mm -hmm. So you have to do that. I think educating yourself is really important. A lot of times people are just not educated and they don't really know what their rights are, what they aren't. Um, and I've said this before, you know, the police will never ask permission for something that they don't need permission for. So I've had a situation where, you know, cops came to my house looking for somebody and they asked, can they come in? And I said, no. Because I can tell you, you wouldn't ask me if you didn't need my permission, mm -hmm. right? You would just come mm -hmm. in. And so if they're asking you questions, Answer the questions, but answer it in the way that you feel is appropriate. And don't be fearful of saying no if they ask you a question. You have the right to say no. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so, you're originally from Memphis, yes. right? What yes. you doing in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I moved to Atlanta the very first time for school. Um, and then I left Atlanta and I went to DC and I moved back. It just okay. It just, you didn't like DC. I love DC. <laughs> That's where I'm from. <laughs> oh yeah, I love DC. It's an amazing place. Um, I lived there for four years. Okay. And um, I loved it. It's great. Um, but Atlanta just felt like home. It mm -hmm. felt, you know, it was much more progressive than Memphis, but it was still the South. So. I just I love it. You know, it's, it's become a world city. You can go anywhere in the world from here. Like yeah, that's that's great. true. Are you based here now? I'm based here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, do you have any upcoming shows or concerts, performances? I'm actually getting ready to do not here yet, but I'm getting ready to do a promotional tour. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to a lot of places. Going to um, I'm going to ASCA, I mean ASCA, LA for ASCAP Rhythm Soul Award. We have some radio out there. Okay. And we're going to Connecticut, New York, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. A lot. There's a lot over the next over the next few months. So there'll be a lot of shows and performances coming up. Okay. Well